What's good, everybody? Welcome to my parents' basement. I'm your host, Rob G., filmmaker living in his parents' basement, documenting the struggle so that you can avoid mistakes I've made or get yourself out of a similar situation. Today's show is going to be just a little bit different because I don't have any scintillating secrets from my history to share with you today. We spent most of our time putting together Sid's show last week, and if you haven't seen it yet, it's right here. Go check it out. We're about a month and a half into our experiment about Sid and I releasing a show every week. Alt Fly is the main show. My show just comes out kind of as a bonus. It's more just a supplement to Sid's show. Some shows have gotten a lot of really good traction and some of them you haven't watched at all. Or if you have a topic that you think really isn't being covered, go ahead, drop us a line in a message or in the comments wherever and we will definitely look into getting that done. Another thing I wanted to cover on my show today is Black Magic Cinema's release of their new Pocket 4K Cinema Camera. This is something that is really important to us because as you know, or maybe you don't know, we film all of our shows on the Black Magic Pocket Cinema Camera. Well, now they are putting a 4K edition into the marketplace. And this is something that I speculated on back on March 1st. If you go to OptimumFilms.com, I knew that the clock was ticking on the lifespan for our Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera. I just had a hunch that they were gonna do a new revision sometime soon. I mean, when any camera gets around five years old, they're gonna start looking at ways that they can replace it and freshen up the market a little bit. Although up to four months ago, people were still releasing videos about the validity of buying a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera in 2018. So, <laughs> still a very useful camera. We still love it and we'll still continue to use it until we upgrade. But yeah, like I said, if the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K is as good as the original 4K with the dynamic range of the Blackmagic camera, what's there not to love at that point? So without further ado, let's talk about the TIE Photo Variable ND 2 to 400. Now, I gotta say, when I saw this, it's one of those budget pieces of equipment that you kind of think, okay, should I take the gamble on this or not? The packaging on this product is amazing. Right out front, it tells you it's an American made product assembled in California and, um, you know, it. The, the box, there's nothing cheap about the way that they put this out. It definitely feels like a high quality product the moment you pull the cellophane off. Now, once you get the box open, it's something different because the jewel case is just wedged in there. And I have to be honest, it took me several tries to be able to get this thing out of the packaging. I had to cut there because I just I couldn't figure it out and then I was like well what if I just pull this ribbon as hard as I can and then pop there it goes and in the bottom there you see the uh, complimentary magic fiber cloth but that is the entire contents of the box right there and when you open up the little jewel case there you see the ND filter on the inside and now this recessed back was a surprise for me. I've never really seen an ND filter like that before. The ring size that I needed it to fit was a 58 millimeter. That will actually fit both my 12 to 35 Panasonic and my 35 to 100. And those are both 2.8 lenses. It's a 58 to 67 millimeter step up, basically. This little side here will screw directly into your camera but then you're gonna have this much bigger element on the front now. Up till this point, I've been using a Vivitar ND8. I figured that would be a pretty decent comparison for this tie photo because the measurements on the lenses are a little bit, shall we say, misleading. <laughs> You know, so I had to do a little bit of research on this, but f-stop reduction on uh, 400 is actually eight and two-thirds stops. 400 is the ND number, not the amount of f-stop reduction. So in comparison, the Vivitar, which calls itself the ND8, is actually saying that when you put it on, it has an f-stop reduction of eight, which is an optical density of 2.4. So now that the science bit is over, 
Here we are screwing on the Vivitar. It screws on nice and easy. I never have any issues when it comes to speed of getting that on. TIE Photo eh, took a couple attempts there. Oh, there we go. Finally, when it got on though, it was definitely nice and tight and it felt it felt good on the lens, to be honest. I think it's a great pairing with my Panasonics. Just moving the fader around, you can see there's the uh, ND400 number right there. And as you can see, your lens cap is not going to fit. If you have an extra larger lens cap around, maybe that's not an issue. But if you plan on shooting outdoors all day and you're going to be setting the camera down and then putting it away, not having a lens cap can be an issue. So keep that in mind. Other than that though, I think this is a really well made piece of equipment. I'm going to put this right next to my mic so you can hear it. When you're shooting on a cloudy day and the sun keeps popping out and then going behind the clouds and then going out in full brightness and then getting really diffused, you're gonna have to change your light settings a bunch on your camera. That means stopping up or down. You can lose depth of field if you keep stopping up or down. This allows you to shoot at 2.8 no matter what the brightness settings are doing around and that will give you that depth of field that you want. And that's really important if you're shooting a crop sensor because depth of field in a crop sensor camera is, it's not as great as full sensor depth of field anyway. Testing ND filters, obviously you wanna test at a very bright time of day. So I went out uh, in between noon and 1 p.m. And this is mountain light, so it's very bright outside. First, uh, first test here is no filter, stopped all the way down to F22. You can see there's no blurriness to it at all. Background is completely clear. Now I shot it all the way up to F2.8 to show you there's just nothing there. It's total whiteout. Here we are with the Vivitar ND filter on 2.8 and as you can see something is wrong. It's just totally unusable. So it's much more usable at f5.6, uh, at 5.6 and even more at f8. Uh, but you can see that the background detail is totally there. And then at f22, everything is in focus. So the tie photo at f22 with being wide open at two stops is a beautiful image. The side-by-side -side comparison is just amazing. So uh, tie photo, ND, wide open at F12. You see, you got a lot more highlights in there. And I think, you know, for people who like to shoot to the right, that's probably gonna be a usable shot right there. So at F2.8 though, wide open, obviously there's nothing usable. Now, stopped all the way down to the full ND400 at F2.8. Here's where you see the depth of field and the beautiful clarity of the ND filter. Really, this is what I'm talking about. 2.8 gives you lots of depth of field and character from the ND filter. You really actually get to see so much more of the quality of the lens at this point. And remember, this is at full sunlight, top down sun. Look at the separation you get there. That's only possible at 2.8. So here we have the Vivitar at f9.5. And as you can see, it's almost nothing compared to this weekend. So the TIE Photo variable ND filter goes two to 400 ND and it retails for $39.99. I got mine on sale for like 24 bucks and had to just like jump on it right away. So I absolutely recommend it, even at the $40 price point range. It's way better than other ND filters that you get in that price point range. Definitely TIE Photo variable ND filter two to 400 is one of Rob G's recommendations from the basement. And uh, until next time, guys, save money, get out the basement.